I feel guilty today because uh, Paula insisted that I should speak in English, but uh, really I'm not prepared to speak in English for this uh, session. <laughs> Maybe I will point out some important uh, things that I think might be of benefit for you. But uh, the subject has been repeatedly mentioned from several uh, uh, points. So. Uh, Albocasis and his book. <laughs> now, this is a little bit about Azahra himself, born in Cordoba, 1936, lived in Azahra in Granada, and he was translated in several languages. نستعرض أهم الإضافات التي اقتبسها الأوروبيون من الزهراوي. أعتقد ذكرت أيضا في محاضرة أخرى، بس سأذكرها بسرعة. اتهاب المفاصل وسد وسل في العمود الفقري. نسبت هذه الأمراض بعد ذلك الإنجليزي بوت وسميث داء بوت بوت ديسيز طريقة فجر الألماني في اختراع من اختراع الزهراوي برفع الوالدة عند الوضع تسهيل للولادة طريقة معالج كسور مفتوحة بترك طاقة في الجبس أول من أجرى عملية شخ الرغامة تلخيص استومي أول من استدرك ضرورة ضبط الشرايين قبل عمليات البتر أو خلال عمليات الجراحية منع الحدوث النزيف وسبق أمبروا باري الذي ادعاه لنفسه نحو بعد 600 سنة أول من أدخل قطن في الجراحة أول من استعمل خياطة تجميلية تحت الجلد أول من استعمل خياطة بإبرتين وخيط واحد وأول من ارتكب الخياطة المثمنة وهذه أمور هامة جدا في الجراحة علم المسالك البولية تتجلى عبقرية الزهراوي أول من ارتكب القسطرة البولية The first to invent catheterization in urology. واستعملها الطفل الأول لغسل المثانة أو لإدخال بعض العلاجات الموضعية ودخلها. ويبدع بوصف عمليات إصال حصيات المثنى حصيات المثانة من جراحيا أو تفتيتها بلد خاصة رسمها في موسوعته. So he was the first to extract stones from the kidney or from the uh, from the brother, your brother, and also to crush them inside the bladder and extract them later. أول رائد الطباعة طباعة الأدوية كان يكتب أبدع حضاريا قبل جوتنبرغ الذي ينسب هذا الأول أول مرة في تاريخ الطب والصيدلة يقدم الزهراوي قبل ألف عام وصفا دقيقا لكيفية صنع حبوب الدواء وطريقة صنع القالب الذي تطبع فيه أو تحضر بواسطة أقراص الدواء فيقول على, على لوح من الأبانوس أو العاج يعد ثم ينشر إلى نصفين ثم يحفر في كل جهة كل وجه قدر نصف القرص ثم ينقش على قدر على قاع أحد الوجهين اسم القرص والمراد صنعه المطبوع بشكل معكوس ليكون نقش مقروءا عند خروج الأقراص يلاحظ بالغريب أنه المؤسس الرائد أول لصناعة الطبابة وصناعة أقراص الدواء ولكن هذا العقل الحضاري اغتصب منه ذكرت زهراء وطرق التخدير التي استعملها في عملياته الجراحية بواسطة اسفنج المخدرة والتي استخدم فيها الحشيش الزؤان نبتة ست الحسن كذلك يذكر طرق تعقيم الأدواء الجراحية وتطخير الجروح والضمادات وكمان أضاف وصفه في الطب تجديد في الطب كان أول وصف النعور الهيموفيليا وأول مرة ربطت الأوعية الدموية بخيوط حرير وخاصة جروح بشعر ذيل الفرس وأول من أشار إلى حالة الحبل خارج الرحم والمشيمة الميتة في الحبل وأول من أشار إلى سلس البول بسبب البواصير المهبلية المثانية وأول من شق جيب المياه وصور أثناء المخاض 
لتعزيل لتعزيل الولاده واول ما اكتشف مرقط توليد قبل مش عارف مين بقرون واول ما تحايل على فحص الحوض عند البكور وعن طريق المقعدة ده واول ما نصف ضرب ضربات القلب الضائعه واول ما صور الات الجراحيه المستعمله فقد وصف حوالي 200 اله آه، الان الكتاب الوحيد اللي عمله اونلي بوك آه، الزهراوي آه، روت واز التصريف لمن عجز عن التاليف ذات از هاو تو 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 ديل فور هوم هو كانت رايت ذات از يعني ذات مينت فور ذا نورمال بيبول هو ار نوت deep in the science. Uh, الباب الأول طبعا باب الكتاب الطويل وما يهمنا في سنأتي إليه هو في uh, الفصل الثلاثين ومع أنه امبارح كان ذكر أنه هذا اختصار للكتاب أو أو تخليل من قيمة الكتاب الآخر ولكن الحقيقة أن الكتاب الباقي هو شبيه باشياء كثيره موجوده في الطب في ذلك الايام لان كل كل المؤلفين الاطباء كانوا يبداوا بالاشياء العامه ثم الاشياء الخاصه كما ذكرت في البارحه ولكن ما لم يذكره بقيه الاطباء هو الباب الثلاثين اللي هو في الجراحه وما لم يذكره ايضا بقيه الاطباء عندما يذكرون الجراحه هو صور الالات الطبيه التي لم تذكر في اي كتاب اخر. فالباب الاول في الكي وركز الزهراء الزهراوي على التمرن الا انه لا ينبغي ان يتصور على ذلك الامر الا من قد ارتاض ودرب في باب الكي دربه شديده وقف على اختلاف مزاجات الناس وحال الامراض في انفسها واسبابها واعراضها ومده زمانها وقد صمم الزهراوي عده اشكال من المكاوي ورسمها في كتابه حسب اعراض العلاج والتدرج ونلخص هذه الاستعمالات التي ما زالت قائمه للكي الكي كوسيله تعقيم كعلاج للناصور وفي وقف النزيف برضو يعني في ثلاث حالات هو وقف للنزيف أو وقف للدم في مكان العملية والطب الكي ما زال يستعمل في الطب الشعبي في أشياء كثيرة طبعا وكما يستعمل أيضا في الجراحة العادية في من خلال الكوثري في في غرفة عمليات ولكن ليس باستعمال الوسائل القديمة بينما باستعمال الكهرباء والأشياء الجديدة. الآلات الزهراوي طبعا كلها موجودة في المعرض لمن أراد التعمق في في موضوع الآلات. الباب الثاني في الشق والبسط والفصد والجراحات. البط يعني فتح زي بط الدمل يعني فتحه ويضيف ايضا الات تستعملها في كل عمليه ويبدا في وصل الادوات التي يعالجها من الراس الى القدمين في 97 فصلا يتحدث فيها في اربع فصول عن الاسنان وتثبيتها بالفضه والذهب وقلعها وكسر الفك وعلاجه وعن علاج الاورام بالجراحه والسرطان وذكرت الاوائل انه متى كان السرطان في الموضع يمكن استصاله كالسرطان الذي في الثدي أو في الفخذ ونحوها من الأعضاء المتمكنة لإخراج عجلته ولا سيما إذا كان مبتدئا صغيرا أو أما متى قدم وكان عظيما فلا ينبغي أن تغريه أو أن تقربه فإني ما استطعت أن أبرئ منه أحدا ولا رأيت قبلي غيري قد وصل إلى ذلك فهو هذا هو ما يجري الآن في الطب الحديث أنه السرطان في المراحل الأولى في المراحل الأخيرة لا لا يقربه أحد ولا يعالج احد لانه صار تقريبا مقدمه للوفاه. ثم يتحدث عن امراض الاطفال الخلقيه او الخلقيه كالاطفال الذين يولدون ومواضع البول غير مثقوبه والمقعده غير مثقوبه ويتحدث عن الطهور. ثم عن حقن المثانه بالزراقات يعني بالسرنجز. عند اخراج الاحصاء من المثانه وان اخراجها عند النساء ثم تسخن عليها عند قباله نصب الفرج عند اصل الفخذ واول من فعل ذلك هو الزهراوي ثم عن الدره المائيه يعني الهيدروسيل 
والريحيه التي مع ذلك وبين علاجها الجراحي وعلاج الفتخ الارابي ثم الفتخ الارابي اللي هي الهرنيا الهرنيا انجونالي ثم يتحدث عن امراض النساء والولاده ويصور الالات الجراحيه التي يحتاج اليها في اخراج الجنين وهو مخترع المال قط لاخراج راس الجنين هذا كانت بتصور خطوه مهمه جدا في الجراحه وفي الولاده ويتحدث عن امراض المقعده والبواصير والنواصير وعلاجها جراحي النواصير اللي هي الفستولازيس ثم يتحدث عن عن النساء والولاده ويصور الالات تحتاج اليها في اخراج الجنين ثم يعرف العلاج العام ينتقل الى لجراح البطن وخروج الامعاء وخياطتها وانواع الخياطه ومضاعفات مختلفه وصف الخياطه بمصران الحيوان وقد يمكن ان يخاط المعاء ايضا بالخيط الرقيق الذي يسل من مصران الحيوان اللاصق به اللي هو هذا اللي بيحكوا عنه الكات كات ولا هي ولا لعله اول ما استعمل خيوط الكات كات ويتكلم عن بط الاطراف والدوالي ولعله اول ما استعمل سل العروق بالطريقه الحديثه سل العروق اللي هو جراحه الدوالي بيعملوها بطريقه سل العروق يعني مش عارف شو بسموها هلا بالانجليزي المهم انه بيستخدم الجراحه يسحبوا العرق المنتفخ سحبا من من الفخذ ستربينج رايت واول ما واول واما سلو فيكون على هذه الصفه تمكن العليل ساق العليل ان كان فيه شعر كثير ثم تدخله الحمام وتنطل في ساقه بالماء الحار حتى تحمر فتدور تدور العروق او يرتاض رياض مغريه ان لم يحضره حمام حتى يصون العضو ثم تشكل الجلد قبل قباله العروق شقا بالطول اما في اخره عند الركبه او في اسفله عند الكعب ثم تفتح الجلد بالصنانير وتسخن الجلد من كل جهه حتى يظهر الحس وعند ظهوري تراه احمرا قانئا فاذا خلص من الجلد تراه ايضا كانه الوتر ثم تدخل تحته مرودا حتى اذا ارتفع وخرج عن الجلد علقه بصناره عمياء ملساء ثم شق شقا اخر بقرب ذلك الشق بقدر ثلاث اصابع ثم مسخ الجلد عن العرق حتى يظهر ثم ارفق بالمرور كما ارفق بالمرور كما نقلت وعلقه بصناره اخرى كما فعلت اولا ثم شق شقا اخر او شقوق كثيره ان احتجت الى ذلك ثم سله وقطعه في اخر الشق عند الكعب ثم اجذبه وسله حتى يخرج من الشق الثاني ثم يتحدث عن اخراج السهام وعن فصد الحجامه وتعليق العلق الباب الثالث ويتحدث فيه عن الجبر وعن العظام وانما استفدت ما استفدت لطول قراءتي لكتب الاوائل وحرصي على فهمها حتى استخرجت علم ذلك فيها ثم رسمت التجربة والدربة طوال عمري وقد رسمت لكم من علمي ومضت عليه تجربتي بعد ذلك في هذا الباب جميع ما أحاط به إن قربت إن قربته لك إن قربته لكم وخلصت من شعب التطويل واختصرت غاية الاختصار وبينته غاية البيان وصدرت لكم فيه صورا كثيرة من الآلات التي تستعمل فيه إذ هو من زيادة البيان كما فعلت في البابين المتقدمين يعني بعد ولاد الان بعد 21 في القرن ال 21 من الصعب انه نيجي نحكم ايضا على الزهراوي بمنظور القرن ال 21 ولكن this can be said in English also it is very difficult or very easy to criticize a Zahrawi or to look at a Zahrawi in the eyes of the 21st century but uh, to understand the importance of his work, we should uh, try to uh, uh, see uh, the work, his work in the eyes of his century, where he was uh, really uh, advanced in his, uh, yani before his time and try to invent new things to cope with the difficulties that he was uh, facing. Uh, he read all the books of uh, his predecessors like Jalingarain and Hippocrates, Paulo Virginia, Alexandria, 
And uh, maybe the last one is the most uh, important one for Abu Qasim. Thank you very much. Thank you for your presentation. The next uh, one is by our colleague Maria Dosameiro Barroso from Portugal, who will tell us about the dental extraction, albucasis, and the Greek Roman legacy. Please. thank the um, organizing committee for inviting me for this wonderful conference and uh, I would like to um, um, to say how happy I am because of uh, what uh, what congratulating them for all the work that they are doing especially involving students I think that is really some something v remarkable that I'd like to do in Lisbon. Uh, so I'm going to speak on dental extraction, albucasis, and Greek Roman legacy. Uh, starting with Goethe, the surgeon devotes himself to the most noble of all tasks to heal without miracles and to work out wonders without words. Uh, Dental problems can produce the most excruciating pain and can only be, be relieved by sometimes by tooth extraction. Dental surgery is mentioned in Hippocratic treatises um, and um, on pain arising on teeth, it is advised that the tooth, if the tooth is decayed and loose, remove it. If it is not decayed or loose but produces pain, dry it out by cautery, medications that are chewed uh, are useful as well. Uh, so dental extraction seems to be uh, ca carried out um, in the time and the instruments necessary should be uh, some with which the learner must be proficient, says Hippocrates. The tooth forceps, odontagra, and the uvula forceps anyone can employ since their use appears to be straightforward. The, Greek, the tooth forceps was first described in the book Mechanics, attributed to Aristotle as an instrument to help physicians in tooth extraction. It was of iron and was composed of two levers on a pivot. A Greek later edition of the work by Henri de Monantail, translated into Latin, presented the drawing of the instrument of a small forceps with the nozzles closing completely and handles bent out outwards, allowing better gripping. Uh, this is a set of uh, instruments from the Temple of Apollo uh, from Herophilus' time from the National Museum of At Athens and it is the came dental set that came to, to us. It displays the basic instruments for dental extra ex ex extraction, a small um, forceps, um, uh, then you have a knife, and tweezers, and this is uh, this is this is a knife, and these are tweezers. This is lateral. The dental forceps resembles uh, resembles the drawing by by Monantail. The nozzles do not close uh, completely; they must be broken, otherwise they would not grasp the tooth. According to Blickes, only one surviving type of Greek Roman forceps is rarely of iron, so this is of iron, also consistent of two elements on a pivot like the item described by Aristotle. 
Over 20 dental forceps survive. Many were recovered from archaeological contacts. Most are of copper alloy. There is evidence that a tooth forceps could be used in bone surgery as a weapon forceps to extract arrows and other penetrating foreign bodies. The tooth faucet could be multifunctional. Uh, the first alert on the dangers of the procedure came from a tooth extension, of course, came from Aerophilus of Chalcedon. In his pioneering attempting attempts to disclose the cause of death in post-mortem examinations, listing tooth extraction as a cause of death. Celsus presented the most complete description of the indications, technique, and complications of tooth extraction, such, such as dislocation and fracture of the jaw. Healthy teeth should be preserved by a wire when broken. When teeth became, become loose, either from weak, weakness of the roots or disease drying up gums, the cautery should be applied without pressure on the gums, which should be smeared with honey and swelled with honey wine. Tooth extraction is indicated when pain cannot be managed. And here is the text by Celsus that I'm not going to read. Um, and whenever after extraction a, to, a, to a root has been left behind, this must be at once removed by the forceps made for the purpose that the Greeks call risagra. Celsus' technique is very correct for the time. He refers to difficulties with small teeth and roots, bent roots, and and rising to fill with lead a cavity so that the tooth did not break under the forceps. The instruments referred are a tooth forceps, a small forceps, volcella, a scraper, scraper he refers uh, indirectly, a probe, and a special forceps for the roots. Celsus did not refer to anesthesia. Uh, Celius Aurelianus is a, a Roman physician and writer from the fifth century AD and he says that dental forceps should only be used when the tooth could not be pulled out with a hand. He stated that the, uh, the lead dental forceps, which could be called dentiducum in Latin, um, as he referred, and he referred to dental extraction, that it was prominently displayed in the temple of Apollo of Delphi for the purpose of showing that those teeth should be pulled which are ready to come out or are loose and shaky, in short, those requiring for extraction no more than the pull of a lab instrument. But if these uh, physicians uh, hold that every aching tooth which uh, harms sound teeth should be pulled, it follows that whenever there is general pain throughout the teeth, all the teeth should be pulled. This is ob obviously very incorrect. Now we have pointed out in our medical treatise entitled Answers how decayed or loose teeth should be extracted, but only if they cannot be saved. So this is in contradiction with the previous sentence. Um, Paula Zegineta, the last Byzantine compiler of Greek Roman medicine, uh, and the most important source for Albucasis, uh, also refer to dental extras, e e extraction. It should be noted that Arabic authors read and translated Greek medical textbooks into Arabic. They did not read the Latin authors. Uh, the sources for Albuquerque's were Hippocrates, uh, Paul Egineta, who mentioned a tooth extractor, a small tent, a respiratory, and a file. And now the dentistry case from the Bustov collection the National Museum of Archaeology in Lisbon. Uh, so it was um, um, donated to the museum by this collector. And uh, um, so uh, the, the, the exact um, dating and provenance uh, is not, no, uh, the provenance is not known. And the uh, dating is also difficult, but uh, the instruments are from the 1st century BC until the 3rd century AD. Um, the most important piece is this dental forceps that, that you see. It is uh, on copper alloy. It's uh, powerful, powerful chores. Uh, and this bent word, spatula. The other instruments, well, this 
is um, a scalpel uh, and these are tweezers. Um, a, this is a probe and these are a, a spat, a spatula, siato uh, cisco mele and a, a box to store medicine. So these, 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 these instruments are to prepare medicines and this, this, this and this and these are for tooth extraction. Uh, the instrument resembles uh, this. Oh, sorry. Resembles um, these tooth forceps from Vindonesia. So this tooth forceps is only for um, frontal, upper uh, teeth. And so is this. And this is another with some simili similarities, as you can see. And this is a root forceps. Uh, Karl Schulhoff, um, from which I took the pictures because I, I think they are uh, good, uh, presented an ensemble of Greek Roman hooks, tweezers, knives, and cutteries used in dentistry corresponding to the descriptions by Celsus and Paul Eginetta. No instrument resembles the backward bent spatula from Lisbon dentistry case that seems to be a periosteal elevator. Um, I found no parallel um, for this piece in uh, his um, work um, in, in Sudhoff, neither in later bibliography consulted on this subject. So I think uh, this is a, a unique um, instrument. Here it is, the forceps, and this is the collection by Karl Sudhoff of uh, hooks, um, uh, tweezers, um, and here knives, and uh, there's a cautery there. There is no cautery in the one from Lisbon, but I think this is really a very important um, and unique uh, specimen. Uh, this two, two bone pixies are also part of the collection and they are very interesting because of their lead, as you can see. Uh, the lead has the, the form of uh, a puppy, a puppy capsule. Well, well, you see the capsule there, okay? It was um, usually, um, well, there are many of these leads since ancient uh, Egypt and uh, from uh, um, Crete, Heraclean, from Menak civilization. So, um, um, uh, well, um, poppy, uh, papaver som somniferum was uh, used uh, for ritual purposes and for medicinal purposes, for anesthesia, and it was stored in boxes with um, the lid of the um, of the the, cup, the the plant. And another, uh, well, this may be, I think it is, uh, it might be um, Yoshima's Niger, because it is also um, the. The, um, the drawing, well, it's, it's also a capsule of, uh, of uh, a plant used for, for anesthesia. So I think this <laughs> is also these two pieces uh, together with the other uh, spatula are very, very special. Uh, now, albucasis. Uh, albucasis, um, well, uh, uh, deals with dental and root extraction in the chap chapters uh, 30 and 31 of his book on surgery. In the previous chapter, he recommended that the outer surfa surface of the teeth and molars should be scraped and also between the gums to decent crusts or gritty substance substances, still nothing remains. He divides a number of scrapers also for the inner side of the teeth. Well, uh, he refers to barber surgeons and I could not, um, 
I must say that uh, barber surgeons are not mentioned in antiquity at all. Uh, and and he, he refers to his malpractice, of course. Uh, for, in, for Greek and Roman um, doctors, surgery was a noble art performed by physicians. Surgical tools were proudly exhibited by physicians in funerary reliefs. Uh, here you have a, a whole uh, set of instruments of a surgeon, and here you have a smaller set. The, uh, this is from the Lateran Museum, depicts a tooth forcer as part of the surgeon's instrumentarium, together with a cupping vessel, a clister syringe, a medicine box, box, surgical knives, and probes. The medical instrumentarium from a funerary relief from Peloponnesus also depicts a surgical in, uh, instru instrument set with two, two tooth forceps, see here. Uh, this set belongs to the Berlin doctor's funerary reliefs that presents a physician that was heroized for his excellence in medicine, just like Asclepius. Um, now, Albuquerque's dental instruments um, describing extraction. Albuquerque advises that toothache should be treated with every device and that the physician should be rel rel reluctant to extract because nothing replaces the tooth because it is a novel substance. The physician should only proceed to the extraction if the patient is determined to have it out. And here we have the patient deciding for, for the surgery, what was interesting. He advises to act with <coughs> deliberation because the pain often deceive, deceives the patient who, is, who do, does not think that a sound tooth is provoking pain. But only the extraction of the rotten tooth will relieve the patient's tooth pain. So uh, n not like Celius Aurelianus that said that all the teeth should be pulled. Um, he mentions um, the tooth force. His tooth forceps has long serrated jaws. Um, the inner side, uh, in the inner side to provide a good prehension. He mentions the use of a scalpel to cut away all around the, the tooth. His description of tooth extraction and instruments, mainly of the forceps, is more accurate and precise than the one by Celsus that he possibly or almost certainly did not know. Uh, the Indian iron um, of the tooth forceps is made, uh, the tooth points to the Indian influence. Uh, Greek Roman instruments in forceps are different from those devised by Albocasis, although the function is the same. They have bent handles like Indian instruments. Curiously, if you remember, Aristotle tooth forceps by Monantail had bent handles because Albocasis' influence impregnated all later European authors. Root extraction is also um, described a detailed um, extraction of roots and broken pieces of mandible, devising a root forceps and triangular slender and forked instruments. And here is what he says that I have no time to read, but you, ca you can read in speaking Lewis. Um, and as a conclusion, I say that the, the dentistry case from the Bustov Silva collection presents a sample of dental instruments, the tooth faucet and also the periosal elevator being of most interest. Also, the two bone pixies with lids in form of poppy and handbane capsules give notice of the anesthetics, anesthetics used. We don't know exactly in, dent, in dental extraction or just to relieve pain. Well, uh, that should be discussed. Albuquerque uh, presents an accurate and detailed information on tooth and root extraction and on the description and treatment of the most common complications. His preoperative assessment is more complete and correct than the previous Greek Rom Roman authors. His instruments are carefully and suitably devised. The Lisbon tooth forceps and the Albuquerque uh, uh, forceps are, uh, uh, are frontal upper forceps. Other instruments existed. Roman forceps, at least for lower teeth, have been found in archaeological excavations although they are not mentioned in written sources. Albuquerque says that dental instruments are very numerous. 
and that ex the, the experienced worker may devise fresh instruments according to his work on actual cases. So these texts and instruments are taken as samples. We have no complete overview of the whole surgical instruments and procedures for these extractions from Greek Roman times and from Albucates. Uh, well, knowledge and stand. thanks for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Barroso, for this very comprehensive review, also for keeping uh, the time. The discussion, of course, uh, is postponed at the end of the session. And now I introduce the next speaker, Dr. Nomad Neji Saad Mohamed El Zifat Way. Sorry for the pronunciation. Could Al Zarawi be considered a biochemical engineer? Please. Sorry, technical issues for uh, uh, applying video. So there are some technical difficulties uh, awaiting for <coughs> the solution. I would invite uh, the next speaker, Dr. Maria Blanca Ramos de Viesca from Mexico, to tell us uh, about uh, Azarawi Albucasis, precursors of aesthetic and reconstructive surgery. Please, Maria Blanca.
morning. Um, I'm going to talk about Albucasis as a precursor of the aesthetic and reconstructive surgery. Beautiful, nice, sublime, wonderful are just adjectives that oft are often used to describe something we like. Beautiful has given the rise to philosophic and abstraction of a great transcendence, but in practice, it had never obtained the status of something absolute, has been proposed and still imposed canons of relationship. Proportions straight, but finally, even all depends on the time of the social cultural context, where or from they are observed. Now, what we define, what do we like? This is a question that is posed by many anthropologists about which are the reference to guide the modification of human beings in order to enhance their beauty, making synonymous of what we like, what is the beautiful, and what we attract. What exactly do we define as attractive? In this is the, dile the dilemma of beauty brought of every day. If it's possible to define it in quantity or quality terms, the question is substantial, since it can be said without not much problem that someone or something is more beautiful after it belongs to a modification, but how much beautiful, or it becomes beautiful without having it before. For Kant, the perception of beauty is the result of the association between the object of the nature and the pleasure associated with its observation. Its beauty, pleasure, associated with quality, whether in the sublime pleasure that accompanies quantity or both, attraction and rejection are dependent on the sensitivity of each human being. In this way, the answer is not simple, nor can it be linear, because beauty is not mean by the determining of absolute construct. It's in the perception of characteristic of the nature of the object and the subject in question, captured through the gaze and according to the subject of the individual who perceive it, especially when it looks and defines what is beautiful. However, this definition depends on the cultural identity, society, time, fashion, in a word, in the individual and social perception, perception, and what it means or symbolize a certain trait to a person that observes it. If, if it was simple to the limit, the beauty term, there would be no controversy or conflicted opinions. In Greek philosophy uh, of the 15th and uh, 16th centuries, beauty was also uh, was always associated with goodness and divinity. The term of beauty was expressed in perfection, nobility, and value. It means the unity of infinite human world with divine and infinite. It will know that Plato established a theory according to which everything was related of, in the world in the sense is not only of a reflection of a true reality, but it was also found only in the world, words of the idea. What we can see in the existence of, of people. If beautiful is something that is provided, we can see around what uh, happens in, um, in, the, in the painters, in, in art, how is the normality of people uh, 
different of what we can see in other population. Islam has, in the Islam, has a, uh, has a clear, deep uh, vocation of beauty. Here we can see uh, some pictures also of uh, with uh, uh, malformation, uh, congenital malformation, or some sicknesses. In the Islam, has, uh, we have a, uh, they have a deep and clear vocation of for beauty. Art was not an external addition in this way of honoring God. It was a way of living every deep of relation. The miracle of perfection of all orders and in particular beauty has manifested. Beauty is part of life. God is beautiful and loves beauty. He makes a beautiful world through which we can observe it. From a philosophical perspective, the body is the manifestation of humanity. The body has a specific meaning and expression. In its own form, the relation, it says, a person who lives in his own existence and relates to other men through the body. The body represents a person in his world and the origin of culture and humanity, human intentionality. In the body is possible to manifest the self, its existence. This lamb has a clear, deep vocation for beauty. According to Ips has, there has been classes of beauty, the sweetness and the future and grace of, of movement. al -Bukasi wa, uh, has was the first uh, well recognized some techniques of uh, of pl uh, plastic and reconstructive surgery. In a strictly sense, each procedure in, such a, in surgery has a part of plastic and reconstructive art. Here we can see on the book one, some of the teams uh, he has, uh, we, uh, I chose for that has related a relation of aesthetic or reconstructive surgery. In the book two, these are all the, um, all, all, all the themes. And in the book two, losing of the, the treatment of cancer, the amputation, the loss of the teeth and, and the correction and in the book three, some uh, of the uh, procedures that now they are uh, part of the plastic surgery. Well, I have taken some examples of what, um, what are the, some uh, of the treatment of plastic surgery. As Al Bukasi says, in fact, some times are born with an perforated audit auditory. It also get an obstruction of the passage of the ear, either from an adjurance or from a flesh. Or the loosening of the skin of the scrotum. And he has, uh, he, he talks about this, has a horrible appearance and he who desires to treat this condition should make the patient lie on his back, and he gives all the, the recipe to, to treat this condition. Or, in the treatment of, of cancer, the ancient said, when the cancer has a site and the eradication is possible, such cancer, breast or tight, you can remove it. Or, in the treatment of exophthalmos, that the reduction impairment of vision uh, who get the bowels open. So, albucas is always, or 
or in, in this case, in the, uh, for this, in the for, uh, chapter 47, in the treatment of male breath, uh, breast when resembles a female. So, advocacies always emphasize the importance of a good physician and the patient relationship, taking care of the safety of patient and always interested to transmit his knowledge. He transformed the innovation and the modification of the surgery practice, especially in Italian and the subsequently to all European surgery. The instrument and their use on one scientific communication of that time. As in the past, as in the present, and I think maybe in the future, we can take Albucas's work, especially in plastic and reconstructive surgery, where is the subject of suffering where the patient demand in based the necessity, the desire of be beauty, and I, f I finalize the, this communication telling. Uh, Albucasi's work. So I warn you against undertaking any cases in which there is an element of doubt of you. For the exercise of art, you will be modded by all kind of persons with all manner of affliction. So, so be aware of sicknesses that that itself is a relief and a counter of excess of suffering and the length of the miseries. The illness be it being some settled as presaged death. Some will lavish, then will wither on you and enrich you, and the hope then be curable, uh, curable in their time. Thank you very much. Very interesting presentation. I would ask uh, if there is a, a possible relationship with the much later work of the Italian plastic surgeon Tagliacotti, but this will be postponed, as we said, at the end of the session. Now I kindly ask uh, my co-chairman, Professor Robert Fanini, and I hand him the microphone of the session. Thank you very much, Giorgio. We will proceed uh, immediately, thank you very much, with uh, Kaf Al-Ghazal from England. We have already heard quite a lot of things about the surgery of al but I think he again will try to explain us that he is the pioneer of our Western surgery and Eastern surgery, <coughs> modern surgery. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. I think, first of all, thanks very much for everybody and uh, for the organizing committee. I'm going to speak in English and probably maybe touch on a few uh, uh, points in, uh, in Arabic. Um, I work in England uh, as a plastic surgeon, but I'm not going to talk only on plastic surgery. I'm going to cover what uh, this great uh, surgeon did in different areas uh, uh, on surgery. Uh, Yeah, I mean, we, we probably maybe all um, know quite a lot uh, about Al-Zahrawi so far, so I'm not going to uh, stop. The, but it's quite interesting to know uh, Al-Zahrawi himself, is, uh, he lived for 77 years, so, um, and uh, he 
worked for almost 50 years in surgery, so plenty of experience he gained. Uh, he was in uh, Al Zahra near Qurtuba, and this is Qurtuba that time, over uh, half a million books. Uh, and uh, that time, Andalus, as well as you can see here, was almost uh, uh, a great uh, part of the civilized world. Even kings from Europe used to send their uh, children to, uh, to study in uh, uh, Andalus. King Offa from England, even he uh, used uh, uh, the currency. He put uh, uh, some from uh, the Islamic dinar. You can see a shahada, ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, and Muhammad Rasulullah. So you, just some uh, idea can tell how uh, great time was. Uh, Abu Qasim al-Zahrawi, obviously, uh, he worked during the uh, Mawiyin time. And uh, I'm going to start uh, probably maybe talk about uh, some uh, uh, chapters on uh, Al-Tasrif. Uh, Al-Tasrif, in fact, is interesting. He wrote it to his student and to his children, uh, very much unlike some of the uh, other uh, uh, physician, Muslim physician, they wrote it to the rulers. Uh, yes, it's, uh, we're talking about the, the last chapter, the chapter 30, and even chapter 30 is over 188 uh, sub-chapters. So Al-Maqala Al-Thalathun, uh, it's considered of almost 108 and described many. Uh, I'm, I'm probably maybe starting with the general surgery. I know we have a few uh, general surgeons, including uh, Dr. Bashir and uh, a few others. So when Al-Zahrawi actually uh, talk on um, surgery, he covered quite a lot and uh, uh, he described the thyroid surgery, he described even jirahatul uh, batin wa jirahatul am'a. And uh, he, uh, yes, he took lots of experience from what uh, Galland did, uh, described four techniques how to close the abdominal wall. Two of them quoted from Gallen, and uh, he in fact put even uh, what uh, Gallen said in words, exact reference. But he added a few other techniques he did himself. And he described uh, as well, uh, when you close the uh, abdomen, you might find it difficult. So he described the position, which uh, Trindenberg uh, described it over 100 years later on and uh, uh, took his name. But Al-Zahrawi uh, did it a uh, while before. Uh, also, he described how you uh, close wounds, and mainly the am'a, the intestinal wound, how, to, how you close it, either using the ant's head by and that time used to be probably maybe quite uh, popular. So the big ant, the annamli al-kabir, you, you, you make the ant to uh, bite on the wound and then you cut the head and you leave it, uh, as you see here. So you leave it. And also he described the other way to close the intestinal wound by using misran uh, al-haywan. This is from taken from... Uh, the uh, intestine of the animals, and this is what known nowadays as the cat goat. Also, he, he was quite a pioneer on uh, uh, describing how you stop artery bleeding. How would you do this? Uh, and uh, he uh, mentioned either you, you, you do the uh, compression, obviously, you curse the wound, or using the cautery, al kay or you use the ligation. Ligation using two different types, either the silk, and he called it a brisim, al harir, or the uh, cat gut, uh, which is made from the cat intestine, and he called it autar al oud. And this is well before, uh, obviously, Paré in uh, 1552, over uh, five years earlier. Again, in general surgery, we can uh, uh, touch on uh, a few cases he described. He described uh, dealing with nutu surra. This is umbilical hernia. And uh, this is quite uh, well known how he treated and he described uh, the best way to uh, push it in if it's uh, okay, if it's, it can be reduced or unfortunately if it's strangulated you have to do uh, surgical intervention. He used, he talked about the hydrocell, al-idra al-ma'iyya. And uh, 
he described the, the surgical technique. Also, he went on and described the inguinal hernia and different between uh, different type of hernias, fitqul arabia. And also in general surgery, he described the hemorrhoids, the piles, and the difference between, as you can see here, sorry, the difference between the internal and the external hemorrhoid. Uh, so this is the internal and the external. And he, he called it داخل المقعدة أو أو خارج المقعدة. And it's quite fascinating to, to see uh, somebody actually describe it well before uh, it's been done. Bajatic surgery, some people already describe what uh, uh, and touch on what Al-Zahrawi said. So he described the hypospadias, which is hypospadias, very well known for bajatic surgery and plastic surgery, they do quite a lot. Also, imperforate anus and uh, and uh, also the circumcision. It's interesting on the circumcision, he put here quite clearly, uh, this technique never been used by the Al-Awail, uh, obviously uh, the Christian uh, Greek and the uh, Roman surgeon, they, 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 they never use this in, uh, in this uh, case, al khitan he called it Tathir al-Sibyan, and uh, he put his experience and uh, came to conclusion that using the scissors is much better than using the knife and uh, the uh, al khitan Urology as well, he described how to uh, irrigate the bladders, he described the uh, urethral stones, he described the difference between the bladder stone and the kidney stone that time. You can see this Akhrajul Hasat min al Bathana, and uh, he described how to uh, uh, even uh, use the catheter. And fascinating, even um, using very small time, Tusna'u min fiddatin sagira kal umboob li idhal al idhal al 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 qathara ila dakhil al masana wa akhraj al bowl al muhtabis. So this is, a, and he describes some uh, case report on, on, uh, on this. In obstetrics and gynecology, he described the normal delivery and he gave advices to uh, the midwives, um, al-qabilat, had described the abnormal positions, uh, and also uh, he described uh, the Walsher position, even before Walsher himself uh, described it in uh, 1882 um, in some um, uh, cases. Also, as just mentioned before, uh, Al-Zahrawi, quite fascinating, he uh, described the forceps for extracting uh, the uh, dead fetus. And uh, he put the instruments uh, straight after the technique so we can uh, get this uh, idea. A trauma dislocation, uh, quite interesting. He, he uh, described the Cochet method uh, to uh, reduce the dislocated shoulder. Ag again, quite a long uh, article, the same as uh, it's been practiced now. And even more fascinating, reducing dislocated elbows. He put it here, يَنْبَغِي أَن تُبَادِرَ إِلَى رَدِّ الْفَكِّ Al-Fak means uh, dislocation. You have to reduce the dislocation very, very soon, urgently. قَبْلَ أَنْ يَعْرِضْ لَهُ وَرَمْ Before it starts forming the swelling. Because if you leave it, it'll be very difficult to reduce it. And nowadays we use the same, you have to do it within uh, probably maybe a uh, few hours, very, very few hours, not too long. But at the same time, when you treat fractures, you're not supposed to put full cylinder. I don't know if there's any orthopedic surgeon here. They know when we put, a, when we put uh, the al-jaba'ir or the plaster, uh, you cannot do it straight, uh, full, full plaster. And he put it here very clearly. He said, Why? Why do you need to leave it for a few days before you're applying full plaster? To allow the swelling to go down, otherwise it'll be very, uh, it'll be it's starting, the, as we call it yesterday, the compartment syndrome. Uh, and so nowadays what we do, we put like a temporary splint, just a splint, not full cylinder, temporary splint, we allow the wound we allow the fractures to uh, settle a little bit, the swelling to settle a little bit, and then we put full cylinder. Uh, again, he touched on the malunin and the 
uh, non-union, the Dishbas. Um, on the trauma as well, he described many uh, uh, tools, instruments, on how you uh, use the amputation as well. I'm going to slightly disagree with the, uh, the speaker before when um, he said, yes, he, he, he used the Nuhas al-Sini wal Hadid al-Hindi, but does it mean that he was directly influenced by India or China? Yes, they've all been influenced uh, directly or indirectly, but because this is what they've been used as a material. Uh, so this is quite interesting because he used the, he made the instrument to fit the purpose uh, it should uh, do the job for him and it should do the job as well to, uh, for surgery. Uh, so it's quite interesting. He said, Tusna'u min al-Hadid al-Hindi. Wa zakar akfar min, he put here an fudda al-Hadid, al-Nuhas, wa al-Nuhas al-Sini. So plenty of materials being uh, available that time in Andalus, which used to be very much like part of the uh, center of civilized uh, world. Rip fracture as well. Uh, Al-Zahrawi himself, very humbly, he credited many surgeons before, many physicians before, like Galen and uh, others, but in reducing the rib fractures, he criticized Galen in a very nice way, and he said, I don't agree with Galen when he uh, reduced the rib fracture by uh, taking, al allow patients to take food which cause gas in the abdomen, and he said, uh, he doesn't like it. I don't think he, uh, uh, he obviously recommended. And uh, he prefers to uh, make incision and reduce the rib fracture and uh, put heavy stitch. And we, we use a, a similar technique uh, nowadays by uh, putting mini plates. Uh, again, on wound debridement, debridement means to remove dead tissue and uh, 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 remove the dead skin. So you can't close the wound over... Uh, infected uh, uh, tissue, and uh, he described very clearly you have to uh, remove the dead tissue before uh, you carry on. A plastic surgery, uh, I'm not going to go in very much detail, but it's interesting, he, yes, he uh, described the cleft lip, uh, the hair lip, we call it, the ectropion, and uh, also the ectropion of lower eyelid, so upper eyelid and lower eyelid. And he described, he puts the technique which is very similar to what we normally use nowadays in uh, the uh, uh, plastic surgery. And also, as the, the lady before uh, uh, talked about uh, the gynecomastia. Gynecomastia is uh, how you treat, uh, it's the enlargement of the male breast, and he described how you treat it. And he, uh, he put here, uh, as I can see it here, shakkan hilali, you make like a little C shape. Uh, C-shaped incision to remove the uh, extra amount of uh, breast tissue. And this is uh, still being used, this technique, uh, uh, till now. Um, on tumors, and he called it a saratan. I'm talking about the waram al khabith, saratan, not a swelling. So he, he described uh, a tumor, and he was quite a great to mention that you have to uh, remove some bit of soft tissue, good tissue around it to make sure it's completely removed. So to ensure complete excision, you have to take some of the tissue. And you, but also, he uh, insists it's only the one operable tumor you can remove. Don't go and uh, remove advanced uh, tumor. So if the tumor is large, advanced surgery is not indicated. And himself, he said, I could not uh, cure any patient with advanced cancer. He's talking about his own experience. The guy is not only uh, putting uh, theory, what he read on books or he read from other people. Yes, they're influenced by a previous surgeon, but they, over 50 years of his experience, he did quite a lot of this surgery and he put his observation. On the ear nose, I'm just going to touch on the tonsillectomy, uh, which he described how to uh, remove the uh, enlarged tonsils. And uh, in fact, he described the tongue depressor. And not only this, he put case reports, what he did, and he used little thread from the nose to push the palate and to 
remove the very large uh, amount of uh, uh, tumor. And uh, the last thing he said, I don't know what happened to this patient because she traveled uh, and left the city. So it means they, they, they used to have a follow-up uh, system. So they keep see, seeing the patient a few times till the patient obviously either cure or go. Trachostomy. He was very honest. I, ha I had to put this slide uh, deliberately to show how honest he was because he put it here. This is ma zakarahu uh, al-awail. He didn't, he didn't use it as a, as a, as a uh, technique himself. He uh, described it and he put his observation and he saw a lady. Uh, he had to shahatu jariyatan taqumu bi uh, I think from here I can see uh, yeah, I mean, he, he saw uh, a lady just put uh, the knife and the last, the last few words so the conclusion is trichostomy is safe and this is what uh, uh, great from his point of view he made, he made his comment on this on eye surgery it's quite interesting to know even this delicate surgery yes been used before but what he did say on the cataract itself, which is used to be called al-ma'u nazil Some people in the Middle East still call it al-sad or al-ma'u al-bayda. So, uh, and he described a technique called qadhu al which is very much similar to uh, techniques being used till very uh, soon and probably some areas is still using by uh, removal of the uh, uh, clouded lens, the natural clouded lens. This is and he described a special instrument for this. And not only this, uh, he was very honest when he mentioned a little, little case. He said from here, there's a new technique. I've heard it from people came from, from Iraq, al Iraqiyin, by using uh, uh, a tube, small, tiny, uh, a tube, uh, so it's interesting because a very recent technique for uh, treating cataract, I know if, there, if there's any ophthalmologist here, is to suck, to aspirate the, uh, uh, the lens, which is, which is quite, uh, quite good. Dental care, we just uh, talk about dental care. I'm not going to put too much here, but just to show uh, when he used the dental arch to fix the, uh, to fix the uh, broken uh, teeth, uh, and uh, he described it very, very much similar to what's being used nowadays, the arch bars, to fix it by using some wires between, between teeth, and this is exactly what is still being used in many, in many uh, countries. It's very fascinating, uh, the uh, different type of uh, uh, tools being used, and this is manuscript on Qal'a uh, al-Asnan, uh, obviously this is uh, uh, the manuscripts kept in Oxford in uh, Midland Library. And the gentleman I think mentioned, or oh, the lady on Al uh, Jarrahin, uh, uh, the uh, Al or the barber surgeon. In fact, he, uh, people put some uh, on, the mas on the manuscript, on the side of the manuscript, uh, on the margins, Juhala al Hajjameen, So he gave practical advices not to do, or what to do, or how to do, uh, and quite uh, good. Neurosurgery, I mean, hopefully it won't be too long. Uh, nobody could probably maybe imagine even neurosurgery can be done that time and even before. But what he did, uh, described the right instrument to use it and he said the way to do it is uh, to open the skull, uh, is to, to, to make the misqab, the hole, to use the misqab and use it by hand, not by hammer. Uh, some people use the hammer, obviously very nice, fine hammer, but he described you have to be very careful. So you use the uh, mithqab and you make a few holes and then you make, you, you, uh, and you make the, uh, 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 you cut in between the holes to, to uh, uh, take and remove the piece of bone. And this is very much the craniotomy which we use nowadays in uh, uh, modern technique in uh, neurosurgery. Uh, I tend to put this to show you his Experience. He put here some malpractice, what he saw, some other surgeon, what they did. Like uh, somebody actually tried to remove a tumor from the neck of a lady and cause a bleeding. So try to put some uh, 
experience, from his own experience, put some observation and tell the people this is unique to avoid. Uh, again, another one on the compartment syndrome. Somebody put full cylinder straight after uh, quite bad swelling, and the, the guy, he lost his leg. Uh, another one, he tried to remove, he, he said, Tabib on Jahil, uh, tried to remove a, a big stone bladder from very elderly, and uh, uh, the guy died. So what he did, Al-Zahrawi, and this is very important, we are as a surgeon, we taught how to do techniques. And the most important is, yes, you know how to do the techniques, when you do the techniques, and I know there's a general surgeon as well sitting with us, and the most important is when not to do, when not to operate is very important. It's probably as important as how to operate or when not to operate. And he put it very clearly in his observations. I read the whole articles, uh, Article 30, fascinating. Unfortunately, it's very difficult to put everything in one, uh, in one uh, presentation. And uh, his, uh, uh, I think I should probably maybe update my slide. This is uh, uh, the instruments being replicated from Syria, Dr. Abdel Nasser Qadan, Mahad al -Turas. Unfortunately, in Aleppo, and this is all completely destroyed, bombarded, uh, what happened in Syria, sad stories. And this is from two years ago. When I came here, I saw it in fast. But now, last night, I've seen it's very, very nice, fascinating. I'm sure I'm going to change the slide and put what you've done. Very great to, to, to see the instruments being uh, updated. The instrument of al zahrawi that time was a state of the art, really the state of the art, comparing to 1,000 years before, and this is being used very, very similar to what we normally do nowadays, how we created uh, our instrument. I think one of the main issues for Al-Zahrawi is making the instrument to fit purpose, to fit uh, the right uh, uh, operations. This is Al-Zahrawi, he is teaching uh, his student how to do hijama. And uh, great again that many surgeons after Al-Zahrawi, uh, they uh, uh, praise his, uh, I'm, not go I'm not going to go into details, Gerard of, uh, uh, Cremonia, what he uh, said, and obviously, uh, Guy de Chalwe, uh, everybody uh, quoted Al Zahrawi many times, hundreds of times in their books, uh, and uh, his uh, uh, work being uh, uh, taught in uh, European schools, medical schools, for a few centuries. Uh, Peter Gauta said, without doubt, Al Bokasis was the chief of all surgeons. Uh, uh, again, some books as well mentioned Al-Zahrawi. Uh, this is from uh, Roy Porter as well. Al-Zahrawi is being mentioned. And many books published in, uh, uh, not only in Arabic, in, in French, German, and English as well to uh, commemorate uh, Al-Zahrawi. And this is uh, a few years ago uh, celebrating his uh, millennium uh, uh, death uh, in uh, uh, 2013. And, there's, uh, and this is a little article I I published a uh, uh, few years ago. I'd like to finish this slide. Only those who remember history can make history. Um, amazing what uh, Al Zahrawi did. Jazakumullah khair. Salam alaikum. Thank you very much for this excellent presentation and beautiful slides. I don't know if we can go on with the uh, presentation. The cable is ready. <laughs> so we go backwards. One speaker, Mohammed Begi Sao Mar Mohammed. This presentation should go on could Al Zarawi be considered a biomechan biomedical engineer? Uh, 
May I just ask uh, if the last speaker is in the room, Mr. Kaluk Abdelhak. It was told to me that he wasn't here, so we have a little bit more time after this presentation. I don't think so, so we will have a little bit more time for uh, discussion. like to express my happiness to be uh, a part of this conference and being in this uh, beautiful city, Fez. My name is Mohamed Negizad. I am an assistant professor in uh, biomedical engineering department in Faculty of Engineering, Menia University, Egypt. The title of my uh, talk is Could Al Zahrawi Be Considered a Biomedical Engineer? First, I would like to introduce biomedical engineering. Biomedical engineering is anything that helps the physician to perform uh, diagnosis and the treatment of diseases. Um, other than his own hands and his own experience. This is uh, the simplest definition of biomedical engineering. The resource, uh, this talk is part of uh, a paper published in IEEE e Pulse in 2016. like to uh, okay. it is uh, about introducing al zahrawi and he's intensively introduced in this conference okay uh, i will uh, give the uh, a hint about the surgical instruments that was uh, almost invented by al zahrawi in different disciplines of medicine, like obstetrics and gynecology, urology, pediatrics, cauterization, fractures and dislocations, ear, nose and throat, ophthalmology, dentistry, aneurysm treatment, bleeding control and wound healing, surgical suturing, cosmetology, pharmacology, and the concealed knife in general surgery. First, in obstetric and gynecology, he invented the vaginal speculum to help in the extraction of a dead fetus. It is equipped with a screw arrangement for unscrewing its spoon-like branches to wide the genital tract. You know, the, the screws are uh, screwed in um, the opposite directions, two different directions to increase or decrease the distance between the two uh, spoon-like uh, branches to widen the, genit the genital tract to have uh, uh, a large uh, field of view to inspect the inside the uterus. Okay, then he applied uh, the cephalotribe. It was used to crush the dead fetal head and compress it to be visible in dimension in the uterus. It was not for life delivery. It was in the case of a dead fetus only. The 
then the hook, the hook uh, with two horns was used to extirpate of the dead fetus from the uterus to get the dead fetus out of the uterus after crushing the head, the biggest dimension in, uh, inside the uterus and then getting it out. In urology, uh, he was the inventor of, uh, first inventor of the straight caster for urinary bladder irrigation. Uh, a double thread was used to hold a piece of cotton which was inserted in the picker-like end of the caster. After reaching the bladder, the cotton plug was withdrawn through the tube to irrigate the bladder. And it was in um, appropriate uh, dimensions to be inserted in the uh, urinary system. Also, he uh, was the first to invent the, the syringe, uh, but only for the uh, urinary bladder. Uh, the syringe was used for the injection of medications, consists of long, narrow cannula and a broader straight cylindrical barrel and a cover piston. Like syringes nowadays, the piston is pressed to deliver medications in liquid form to the bladder and it resembles the nowadays syringe greatly. In pediatrics, he used the scissors in circumcision of boys. Uh, the medical uses of uh, scissors uh, is not uh, um, there is a doubt that the Zahrawi he invented the, the, the medical scissors uh, and there is a doubt that the other Arabian phys uh, phys surgeons used it before him. Uh, the shape of the scissors is flattened, sharp, straight and with the pivot tempered. He recommended that the handles and the blades of the scissors should be equal in length to send the correct sensation to the holding fingers. Also, he invented a ring-shaped cautery used in treatment of lower area of lumbar vertebrae of children. Also, it can be used for adults with uh, other dimensions appropriate for them. This area of a child, child's body is associated with spinal column back pain. In cauterization, Al-Zahrawi flourished the field of cauterization greatly. He explained the advantages of using metal cauteries over caustic drugs. The amount of cauterization produced could be precisely judged when using metal cauteries. Also, the neighboring tissue will inevitably damage when using caustic drugs. Also in cauterization, Al-Zahrawi demonstrated the disadvantages of using gold as a material for cauteries. His criticism, gold may liquefy on overheating. The right degree of heat that should be transmitted to gold cannot be attained due to its reddish color. Gold cools down very quickly. He noted that iron is better for Cauteries, his preference is in line with the modern knowledge. The melting point of iron is 1535, while for gold is 1063. There is a difference about 500 degrees centigrade between gold and iron. Fractures. This is a video showing the uh, orthopedic pinch invented by Al-Zahrawi for treatment of dislocations of the dorsal vertebrae.
shows that this location in the uh, backbone and how it could be uh, treated using this uh, technique. Okay, uh, in ear and nose and throat, uh, he used uh, the gulitine uh, for removing swollen tonsils. We scared it and he used a gatherer with curved extremities for extracting a foreign body from the throat and esophagus. And he preferred that the patient uh, uh, decide the right place for the, uh, uh, of the foreign body that he uh, can uh, feel it more than the physician but under the supervision of the of the physician or the rector. Also he invented the tweezers for removing foreign bodies in the auditory canal inside the, the ear. In ophthalmology he invented the crested shaped cautery for cauterizing the roots of the hair on the eyelid when the eyelashes grow into the eye. The roots of the hair on the eyelid were cauterized to stop cornea irritation. And all his uh, inventions in cauteries were appropriate to the place which will be applied on. The cushing needle or the cataract, cataract needle he used for cataract and hypopion. These videos uh, were uh, provided by the, I think, IPTAV uh, organization in Turkey, uh, organized by uh, Professor Dr. Fuad Sisgin, uh, Rahmatullah Ali. It is, has a fine end to be applied on the water inside the that's it. In dentistry, he invented uh, different types of tongs for extraction of teeth and removal of tooth fragments, as you can see. Also in dentistry, Zahrawi used a variety of raspatories, instruments for scrabbing, for removing tartar. He was aware that tartar forms a compact group and causes uh, peri periodontal disease. With a wide variety of shapes. Aneurysm treatment, he used single, double, and triple hooks for lifting and twisting the vessels. Also, he used the scalpel for making an opening in the infected artery. In bleeding control and wound healing, he uh, used natural substance and their effects in the management of surgery described in Al Tasrif book. Uh, in this table, we can see its common name, scientific name, and its effect. He used the dragon's blood. Uh, its effect wood healing and antimicrobial, uh, sarcocola, wound healing, mira for wound healing and antibacterial, aloe, wound healing and antimicrobial, uh, gum arabic tree, antibacterial effect. In surgical suturing, 
Al-Zahrawi was the first surgeon who used animal's gut to suture a wounded intestine. He was aware of using a compatible biomaterial inside the human's body that the body wouldn't reject. And he, uh, he says a story about uh, uh, discovering this, uh, this way as uh, he has a monkey and he uh, ate the uh, strings of his uh, lute, a musical instrument, and he uh, uh, extracted these strings as it is from his uh, uh, excretion. So he knows that the, uh, the strings will uh, not be affected, the animal gut will not be affected or have a harmful effect on the in, inside parts of the body. These strings are still now made of animals' gut. In cosmetology, he detailed uh, detailed perfumes, stocks that rolled and pressed somewhat like roll-on deodorants nowadays. He invented perfumed sticks rolled and pressed in a mold. The earliest antecedents of today's solid deodorants and lipsticks. Also, he studied various hand creams, uh, nasal sprays, mouthwashes, teeth whitening, gum strengthening, hair dyes, and suntan lotions. In pharmacology, he fabricated tablet molds with single doses of powdered medicines. He was the first to print the name of the drug on the tablet. He, he uh, invented a box with a, um, um, uh, a hole, and this hole uh, was, uh, the medication was put in uh, liquid form in this hole, and then it changed it to the solid form. Then he weighs the weight of this dosage. If it is less than the appropriate dosage, he increases the hole in the wooden box to have the appropriate weight of each dose. And also he uh, could write the, the, the name of the drug on the tablet using crafting also in the wooden uh, box. So he's the first one to print the name of the drug on the tablet. Also he used silver foil to store single doses of powdered medicines so as to keep it uh, safe uh, while traveling or something for longer time. In pharmacology, also he wrapped the single doses of drugs in cat gut packs. These packs were ready for swallowing. Meanwhile, the packs were to be dissolved, releasing the medications inside the stomach. This procedure was modified until reaching modern drug capsule designs. The concealed knife. Al Zahrawi invented a concealed knife to be applied at different places in the body. The knife was for incising abscesses, removing tumors and grosses, and treating many struck by arrows, as we see uh, yesterday. <laughs> by the students. The knife is uh, connected in that form to deceive the patient, especially the child, and not cause alarm or anxiety. The conclusions, also the Zahrawi biomedical engineer, yes, of course, advanced the applications of engineering sciences and technology to medicine and biology. He promoted the provision providing global leadership. And he give a, an example uh, for the interaction between the physician and the biomedical engineer, but in the same person. He was a surgeon and at the same time he was the biomedical engineer. Thanks.
Thank you very much for this nice presentation. Uh, we would like to open the floor to questions uh, for, let us say, five minutes. Uh, who can ask some questions to the speakers? Can the speakers come forward and take place on our podium so that they can be answering the questions nicely? I think we heard really a fantastic overview on the work of Al Zarawi. It was uh, very nice to hear a compilation of uh, treatises and of techniques that he used as the first of our great surgeons. Let me perhaps ask first one question to the other speakers. One knows that, in fact, Al Zarawi was the first to include pictures of instruments and of diseases and how to treat them. If one looks at the, the treatise of Paulus of Aegina some centuries earlier, uh, he was not in the possibility to add those pictures. So does one have a good idea of the instrument form that Paulus of Aegina was really also talking about in his surgical book so that we can know what the difference was that Al Zarawi included in his instrumentation. Can we know that? Can we, can we make a comparison between the instrumentation yeah, of Paulus of Aegina and that of Al Zarawi? Exactly what I have studied because um, Paulus of Aegina uh, gives the um, the description, but uh, he, well, you know, um, there are no drawings of instruments in classical um, bo books, in the Greek Roman books. Uh, we know the instruments, and Paula Virginia obviously, obviously knew the instruments, but by the time of Al Zarabi, the instruments, he possibly did not see any Roman, Greek Roman instruments. Because uh, with after the collapse of the um, of the Roman Empire, uh, Roman medicine absolutely collapsed, and possibly only arrows were and foreign bodies were extracted, as Kirkup said uh, in his book on uh, the history of uh, 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 instruments, uh, surgical instruments. So um, Al Zahari had to devise instruments according to the instruments from other Arabic authors, because uh, other authors um, practice surgery, uh, but they di did not include the drawings in their books. Uh, so, so we don't know what he had. He refers there are many instruments, uh, but uh, I think he had to devise his own instruments according to the uh, Arabic tradition and the uh, Hindu tradition, I'm very sorry, Hindu tradition is there, <laughs> and uh, uh, Indian uh, instruments, are, they, are, they are drawings from in Hindu instruments. Uh, bef they, are, they are the only drawings um, in before um, Al-Zarawi, so he obvi obviously knew them, and uh, so he had to devise uh, his instruments uh, reading the, uh, the, the, the Greek Roman books, but devising according to what he had at hand. I think one of the points, I'm just going to make it a bit clear. Uh, I think the great of this conference and having people from different backgrounds is to show that this part of civilization really fit in one area, when in, in Europe we used to call it the Dark Ages. In fact, we now know it's not Dark Ages. There's plenty of shining uh, uh, places. Again, uh, I like to uh, present this as part of a human civilization being there. They always contra influences anyway, in the, and there's always uh, intra influence as well. So they took from, they criticized, they add, uh, they absorb some. Uh, Obviously, he worked for 
good number of years, 50 years, so definitely he had some idea. Even the last slide the gentleman showed, uh, al mibda which is trying to hide it from the uh, children, because sometimes when you do circumcision, they don't have to put a child in sleep. In fact, I'm not sure if he used the opium as opium, but I know he used something called al murqad uh, which is like a syrup. Some people criticize him because part of the uh, material might not be uh, allowed that time, but uh, people uh, use like sedation type. But he used the knife, which is very fascinating. You put it between the fingers, you don't show. Obviously, he made it, he created for purpose, for, for what he felt this is the need for it. So definitely, probably maybe uh, use what before and add and improve and uh, uh, pass it on to the Renaissance as well. Are there other? Yes, please. Uh. Uh, th thanks very much for a fascinating panel. It would be hard to speak on any doctor after this. Um, uh, I had a question uh, for Sharif, but perhaps others could answer it. Um, with the circumcision, does Zahrawi ever mention circumcision of women, Haitan of women, or is it just specifically? So it's never mentioned. Okay. There's a chapter that, uh, that uh, in, in the that he uh, talks about the clitoris uh, reduction, reduction was the reduction of clitoris but what he said here it means male circ circumcision he put it very clear subyan means boys yeah uh, uh, it's, I think what he put here very clear I tend to put in my presentation the actual source what he said in Arabic and put the translation I think he tried to put it very clear. This is, wasn't known to the previous uh, physicians. Probably maybe he meant Gallen and, uh, and the other uh, uh, non-Muslims uh, physician because they'd never been uh, using the uh, circumcision, obviously, uh, for religious uh, reason. Uh, yes, please. M my point actually is the fascination of what Sharif and, and, and the, uh, Dr. Saad also have said regarding the advancements of the surgical tools. So how much do we know about the infrastructure of the, um, uh, the engineers? For example, you, you cited the Indian iron. Now we know that the, iron, uh, the, the Indian iron actually is, is not just pure iron. Um, it is used in the uh, Damascus swords, which is a compound steel, which now with electron microscopy, we know that there is nanoparticles in it to give it that um, strength and um, ability to bend as well. So how much knowledge were the engineers of the time to help Zahrawi and others to, to choose iron rather than uh, gold. Because this is metallurgical knowledge and engineering knowledge, not a physician knowledge. I okay. can't answer this. Excuse me, in the same way, the question in the same way, I have mm -hmm. uh, two passing questions because uh, there are some authors that uh, put in doubt that Zahrawi was a surgeon. He was uh, only described the surgery. But it's clear that, uh, that Professor uh, Kafel Ghazal described that I made this surgery, I made this surgery. At the same time, concerning the instrument, uh, if Al Zahrawi mentioned that I made this instrument, or he mentioned that this instrument is used for, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's very, uh, for, for me, it's very, uh, point, uh, very important. Mm -hmm. uh, if there, these instruments have been made by Al Zahrawi, mm -hmm. or Al Zahrawi mentioned this instrument at it should be used no for. Okay. Okay, I, I would like to say uh, Al Zahrawi is a very prolific uh, scientist. His, his, uh, his inventions and his, uh, as, as an engineer and as a, as a surgeon and as a uh, physician and as a pharmacist, uh, I can't believe he uh, invented all these instruments as 
something like that. Uh, and he maybe gives the design and the of the of the instrument. And, uh, I think that others uh, do. In his book, I, I uh, did it. I used it, this function, but it no, it's not clear that if he has uh, fabricated it from all its uh, uh, procedures, from the design to uh, 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 trials and uh, and uh, errors in trials, then to have the correct the correct uh, uh, surgical instrument for the right function uh, after uh, experimenting it for doing its job. Mm -hmm. That's will you add something? Uh, well, um, well, it's clear uh, that um, both Albuquerque's and also Galen, uh, that doctors devised their instruments. We don't know, of course, if they were helped by <coughs> other scientists. But uh, Galen has a text and Alzuari says the same thing, that you should devise everything that you need according to what you have in front of you. And uh, Galen has also a text like that and there is um, a relief of uh, um, the, the blacksmith uh, with surgical instruments devised by doctors. That's what Yes, some, some addition. Uh -huh. it, uh, in some of part, uh, there's a chapter that he talks about the metals you can put in the mouth. And there is, he says, if you put silver, it would get, get uh, dark. If it, it is well tolerated, if you put gold. So we can, we can be sure that the description of the, uh, some of the <coughs> procedures come from, from the Greek and the Roman and even from the, uh, from the Gallant times. And he just, some of, uh, perfectionate the technique or even put a, a little bit of modification of, of the treatment. The, the, he says at the, at the beginning of the uh, of the trees, he said, he, uh, he do this surgery of the most common uh, diseases that he found. Certainly would not be uh, will close to the discussion. I'm very proud that we have had a good discussion because all our speakers were so enthusiastic that they induced this discussion, but I think we are going to take a break for the tea. One question, still is yeah, Thank you very much, uh, <laughs> Professor. Um, you know, in, in the hierarchy of evidence-based medicine, the highest level of evidence is double-blind, randomized, controlled trials. And the lowest level of evidence is anecdotes, personal experiences, prof professorial mantras. So I yes yesterday alluded to uh, Ar Arazi being the first to apply randomized controlled trials in the use of venesection in the treatment of meningitis. And Ibn Sina also alluded to his seven steps of clinical experiment, experimentation. Trials with animals, then trials with humans. You have to replicate your, your, your results. My question is, was there any similar clinical trials that was undertaken by Az-Zahrawi? I'm not aware of actual clinical trials. Um, I don't want to uh, say this maybe because it's a surgeon. Uh, they call it uh, surgery, it's Amal uh, yad So uh, I know his fascinating book, at tasrif you only focus on the last article, which is on surgery. But he did 29. I think this need to go back and we need to study this and uh, produce what he said. But I'm not aware of uh, uh, a clinical trials, as you're saying, but definitely he put lots of observations on something, some similar cases, and he came to 
conclusion uh, on this. I feel now in Britain, we work probably for 25 years, 30 years practice. The guy works for 50 years in surgery till he's 77. So definitely he had a great experience to put his uh, 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 practice and many, many people after him, this is what I've been talking to people, I think we need to see how, how Al-Zahrawi's, uh, uh, the people came after Al-Zahrawi, what they said about Al-Zahrawi and uh, they judge him on uh, what he did. But answering your question, I'm not aware of actual clinical science as uh, we in the modern uh, medicine uh, believe. So we certainly will have other views in the future. Thank you very much for the audience and for all the speakers. Thank you.